everybody. Welcome to this Xbox Life episode number 510 titled uh, 2018 Stats. This is take two. Had some uh, streaming issues a little earlier. That's nothing new. And uh, I think I've just about given up on YouTube. They can't seem to stream properly or restream properly with our provider here. But anyway, the show must go on and uh, we'll get it out to YouTube later. So this is uh, This Xbox Life, the show that talks about Xbox, Microsoft, and anything else that uh, we really want to talk about. Yet another solo show. Going to make some changes coming up in the next couple weeks here. First of all, I believe next week we'll probably move the show up uh, approximately one to two hours. I'll post something in the Facebook group exactly when it's at and also update the time on the website. But uh, we'll push the time up slightly just to make it easier for people to attend and also for me to record. And let's see here, uh, real quick, uh, you can listen to us live on Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube if that ever gets going on Sundays at 10 p.m. Central-ish. Also, uh, the show is not affiliated with Microsoft or the Xbox in any way. It's a show being done by fans uh, of the Xbox. The views and opinions expressed on the show do not uh, reflect those of Microsoft. So now that that's out of the way, uh, this is going to be a fairly short show, not a whole lot going on. In fact, over the past couple of years, we've usually taken this weekend off. That's the one right between uh, Christmas and New Year's. Nothing going on. People spending time with their families, a lot of crazy stuff going on. I know I've been super busy uh, doing stuff uh, as well as uh, a lot of our community members here as well. But uh, we'll just go through some of the statistics and everything and then uh, get back to our normal format uh, in the next couple of weeks before we start making some changes as well. So there's going to be a lot of stuff changing. New Year, New Year's resolutions, right? Everybody's got those. Um, actually, that's uh, something interesting. I'll post this out in the Facebook group. Um, and uh, if you'd like to answer this, uh, you can also send a voicemail to contact at this Xbox Life or post in the Facebook group as well or send an email to contact at this Xbox uh, life. But anyway, uh, do you have any gaming resolutions? Uh, what, what are you thinking is going to happen for 2019? I know a lot of us, you know, we do the typical resolutions, you know, going to eat better, going to exercise, going to do whatever. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how those goes, but how about gaming wise? Or are you looking to, res, you know, finish any games in your backlog? Uh, are you looking to maybe give Fortnite a try? No, I'm just kidding about that. Uh, I, I know that's my jam, but it's not for everybody. But, uh, you know, are you looking to, you know, give some new genres a try, um, spend some more times on um, something that, uh, you know, you've not quite finished? Uh, I'd like to hear that. So shoot that on over and uh, we'll play it here on the show. Uh, as for me, I'd probably say my gaming resolution is uh, I need to sit down and just get some more solid time of gaming and then not be all over the place. Meaning that I, I tend to do just a ton of gaming, like play like an hour of this game and then move on to something else. And that makes it really difficult because when you come back to that first game, like for example, Wolfenstein two, uh, I've picked up that game multiple times and, you know, with a couple weeks in between and it makes it so hard to, you know, get back into the swing of things, get used to the controls and all of that. And it, it just, it, it's such a chore. It's much better to sit there and to play through. So that that's my big thing. I, I need to pick a game and stick with it until I'm mostly done with it instead of just dabbling with games, all you know, here and there. So uh, yeah, I'd like to hear uh, what you guys have planned. Alrighty, so what have been what have I been playing? Uh, an easy one is Fortnite. More Save the World finally made it into Canny Valley, in Save the World, and uh, just done very little Battle Royale lately. But uh, Save the World is my main squeeze gaming wise, as I've said over the past I don't know two three months at least. And then um, I tried a couple of different games, but uh, the one that I probably spent the most time outside of Fortnite is Dead Cells. Now, 
there's been a whole bunch of folks like uh, Ryan from Horrible Gamers that have just talked this game up like crazy. And uh, I finally gave it a shot. It's on sale right now as part of, I don't know if it was the, um, you know, that end of year countdown sale that they're having or if it was just the games with gold sale. But anyway, it was like 16 or $17 instead of the normal $25. Uh, dollars. So I jumped into it and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's not easy. It's, I, you know, you basically die and you start over sort of. Uh, and, um, you know, it's a little frustrating, but uh, it's a lot of fun. It's very old school, enjoyable. You know, a lot of the things that we really liked, uh, you know, back in the day when I was playing on the Amiga and uh, I don't know if it was even going back far as Commodore 64, but those side-scrolling games were a heck of a lot of fun, and this is one of those kind of style games, but done up with pretty darn cool graphics. And I don't know if you would call it pixel art, but it's that pixelated, you know, 16-bit, I don't think it's 8-bit, but, you know, 16-bit graphics that we, at least some of us have grown up with. And, you know, it goes back to that, but it's so well done. It doesn't look dated and there's a a fair amount of complexity to it. So uh, I've definitely enjoyed it. (laughs) And it's really frustrating the couple of times that I've played and I've done goofs, you know, where you accidentally, uh, you know, like misfire or you jump off of something and then you die. Oh, so annoying. And then you have to go back to the beginning, but you know, so, so yeah, I guess I'm, that makes your, I, that makes it uh, more important to be accurate with everything that you do. I guess uh, one of the biggest issues that I have with it is if there's a whole bunch of bad guys right around, I sort of like, sometimes I'm too busy, like hitting buttons and, and trying to fight off. I lose track of who's who And then I'm like, whoa, I'm over there. (laughs) I'm over there. And then I just get annihilated uh, by the bad guys. But, uh, but it's, it's definitely, definitely a good game. I know it's on some folks number one game of the year list. And I think it's uh, deservedly so. So check it out if you haven't dead cells. A couple quick things. Uh, First of all, you can support us on Patreon. That's at thisxboxlife.com forward slash Patreon. And then also you can leave us a tip. You can go to thisxboxlife.com forward slash donate. And don't forget to subscribe to the This Xbox Life channels on Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube. So a couple of quick topics here uh, before we wrap up the show. I wanted to talk about a couple of the, actually, what, maybe like two or three news things that I found interesting over the past week. And again, it's been such a slow week, not a whole lot going on. And, you know, I think, uh, I don't know if major Nelson was on say on uh, vacation this week and so forth. You know, a lot of the community people are on, you know, out of town vacation. Uh, a lot of the, uh, folks that are in charge of the, you know, Xbox and stuff, you know, they're winding down for a couple of days as well. So it's really, really slow, but, uh, you know, there was, you know, a couple little tiny tidbits of, of, uh, news here. And let's see here. I have to go to plan B with my browser because Chrome isn't working too well. It's one of those nights, I guess. But, um, so the Xbox one, of course, is a powerhouse. And it has been for, what, the five years that it's been out officially now. It came out in 2013. And, you know, with a lot of CPU power, you can emulate older systems. So I believe that there was an emulator that came out, I don't know, a couple years ago, two, three years ago, and it got pulled from the store. It didn't last very long because there's a lot of concerns, copyright and all that, about having emulators. And actually, it's not really necessarily the emulators to a full degree, but you know, once you have an emulator, you need something to play on it. And I think that's the big concern. Although for an emulator, I guess you need to emulate the hardware and that could be copywritten or who knows as well. But anyway, there's uh, one emulator called retro arch 
or is that retro arc? No, I never, I wasn't really sure on that, but anyway, it's an all in one emulator front end. And they've based, the team has basically said that it's going to be coming to Xbox one in early 2019. So that's really interesting. So you could potentially get this and, you know, play all of your old favorites that you had from when you were growing up. However, there is a catch to this. So it is coming to Xbox, but well, first of all, one of the big things for this is that it, you don't need any kind of rooted jailbroken, whatever system to run this on. However, the big hitch is that you need to have your Xbox in developer mode. So this requires, I guess, a $19 uh, dev center account. And there are some other caveats, meaning that if you get that to play this thing, you do have to do a factory reset uh, on the console to remove it and, and some other things. But uh, if this is something that uh, interests you, uh, you might want to look into this. So it's, uh, it's going to be coming out sometime in 2019. More gaming, more gaming. All right. Another thing that was kind of interesting was that, um, let's see here. We had the Duke controller that uh, came out, I don't know, not too long ago. And for those that aren't familiar, the Duke controller is the original Xbox. This is the one that started it all, came out in the early 2000s, the it predated the 360 and the Xbox One. So the original Xbox do controller, this massive beast with that huge Xbox logo right in the center. Uh, that came out, it was redone for the Xbox One uh, recently, especially in relation to the Xbox One now having those um, X original Xbox um, backwards compatibility games. So uh, this thing came out and then there's a company and here I lost the link for this hyper something. What was their name? Hyperkin. Here we go. I finally got it pulled up. Uh, yeah. Hyperkin has the Hyperkin Xbox classic pack up on sale right now on the Amazon store and it goes for approximately $80. And what this includes is a special version of the Duke. This is a green controller that's see-through meaning that you can see the boards and the little, um, vibrating rumble things, whatever you want to call them. You can see through in this, uh, light, green plastic. Uh, it's got that. It's a wired controller, not a wireless controller. So that's a, a key thing. But the coolest thing, at least for me, is that it comes with a special green classic Xbox skin that you can apply to your console. So what this thing looks like is, you know, think of just normal Xbox or Xbox One S. And it comes with this green skin that makes it look like the original Xbox. This thing is pretty sweet. It, uh, it, it has the shape of the current Xbox One S, but we're looking at the retro styling, you know, the big Xbox logo in the center and the big X shape that the original console had. And it looks pretty cool. It's a, it's a light green halo style. Uh, and uh, in addition to the skin and the controller, you also get a one month game pass um, subscription thing, card, whatever. So not normally 10 bucks for that, the skin and the controller, it might be worth it. If, uh, if you're a controller collector, or I don't know if they sell that green skin separately. I know that they do have the regular black skin 
for approximately $30. So I think we reported on that on the skin alone earlier. So you might want to check that out. And uh, if you do snag that on Amazon, make sure to use our affiliate link. That would be much appreciated. And now that the holidays have just passed us here recently, uh, that means that a lot of people have picked up the Xbox uh, at least hopefully a lot of people have picked up the Xbox One. Maybe their first one, maybe um, it's their second or third or who knows, maybe they gifted it to somebody else. But for a lot of folks that aren't necessarily familiar with the system or they're just getting their feet wet in the Xbox world, you know, there's, uh, you know, what what game do you get? And The Verge came out with a pretty good list of the 10 best games for your new Xbox One. I figured I'd go through this, and uh, it's interesting to see some of the stuff that they mentioned over here, and I, I agree with quite a bit of it, and some of them, not so much. So let's go through this list over here fairly quickly. Uh, first off, they recommend Forza Horizon 4. This is definitely a great entry, especially if you start off with Game Pass, because there's actually no cost to this technically, outside of the Game Pass subscription. Forza Horizon 4 offers a lot of awesome gameplay, great driving game, great visuals, and uh, it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, they've also recommended Cuphead, and I think this game has got a great style to it. Uh, it's got that old classic uh, 1930s cartoony uh, graphic style, but this game is harder than heck, I, I tell you. So I don't know if it's necessarily a great one to start off with, but uh, it's a great title. At least a lot of folks love it. Uh, they recommend also Sea of Thieves, another one on the Game Pass list. And I don't know about this one. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good entry, but I don't know for new people. I don't know. I'm not, sh I'm not too sure about that one. Red Dead Redemption 2 is on the list. Definitely a beautiful game, especially in 4K, Xbox One X style. A very slow paced game. If uh, if any of you folks are familiar with the uh, people that did extra credits, uh, the old narrator that they had, uh, Dan, he left and he started his own channel called Playframe and he has Playframe Plus, where he does commentary on games. He's uh, in the graphics arts world, I guess. He's an animator. And so he talked about uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 on Playframe Plus. And it was an interesting spin on, is it too slow? But uh, I think a lot of people would agree that some of the stuff is tedious in there. But the visuals are fantastic. The game is super cinematic. And it's, uh, it's definitely an awesome game to showcase how great that a game can run and look on the Xbox One S. Kind of dipping back into the uh, Wayback Machine, they've recommended Sunset Overdrive. So this is a game that came out a couple years ago. Crazy action, lots of stuff going on. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of people definitely love this game, even though it's a little bit I don't know if it's really dated now, but uh, it's, it was quite a while ago that it came out. They recommended Dead Cells. We just talked about that one a little bit ago. And, you know, they say that it's a mix of Metroid and Castlevania, which is pretty much, I'd say, right on. You know, fight through the dungeons, have a, have a lot of fun. And I think this one is probably family-friendly as well, unlike, you know, something like Red Dead Redemption. Mm, I don't know. Probably not so much. I don't remember what the rating is on that, but uh, I, I'd say it's not E for everyone, for sure. I don't know if it's got mature or teen, but one of, one of those two. Uh, they also recommended Ori and the Blind Force, Definitive Edition. This is another game, very well done. It's been out for a while now, I think at least two years. New sequel to this, uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I believe that's the title. So that's coming out in 2019. But this is a great platform style game, great graphics, extremely well done, and uh, probably a must play for people that like uh, platformers. 
Uh, they also recommended Halo 5 Guardians. Uh, you know, Halo 5 goodness. What more can we say? If you have an Xbox, you got to play some Halo, right? Uh, they also recommended Inside. Oh, boy. I don't know about this one. This one is uh, definitely questionable. It's definitely got an interesting game style. Def- definitely interesting artwork or graphics, whatever you want to call it, animation. But man, that ending, whoa. That last third of the game, yeah, about last third of the game. For me, and I remember Mark, we were talking about it. It definitely went south. And uh, I don't quite like how that ended up. But uh, if you, what are those games? Katamari? Not Calamari, but Katamari. It's something like that. Weird, definitely weird. And they also recommended Below. Below is a game, just recently came out. Xbox exclusive, and I think it's also out on PC. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, this is a roguelike. That's one of the, I guess, hot words uh, lately. It's a roguelike dungeon survival game with lots of puzzles and and stuff. Not, I haven't uh, given some more time to this one. I'm not sh- fully sure what to make of it. But uh, this game has been years in the making because they originally announced it, what, back in 2013 on the Xbox One X, or not what, X, but the regular Xbox One reveal that they had in Mar- in May prior to the release in November. So, um, and that was the list. Uh, curious to see if you folks, uh, what you guys thought of this list over here. It's... It's some pretty good titles on there. I think there's a couple of things that should have been on here and then a couple of things that might have, might need to be replaced. But, uh, yeah, that's a list from Verge. Or The Verge. All right. Uh, then uh, there's a pretty cool list also from on Microsoft's website. And they listed some of the top Xbox games that they're looking forward to. I guess everybody, for the most part, is looking forward to in 2019. So I know we talked about this kind of stuff, I don't know, a couple months back as to some of the stuff that we're looking forward to in 2019. But that was a long time ago. 2019 is in two days as of this recording, or it's actually less than 48 hours away. And you tend to sort of forget as to what's coming. And, you know, you remember some of the big titles, but you forget some of the, some of the little guys. So, and uh, I think uh, a lot of the stuff on the list over here is going to be on most folks' uh, anticipation list. So they list off, and I think these are actually alphabetical. So not necessarily in order of preference, but alphabetic as we go down the list over here. So first off is Anthem. And this is uh, definitely a game that I think is on a ton of people's anticipation list. But we'll see what happens with EA, because Electronic Arts is, uh, they're the folks that are putting this game out. Uh, Anthem looks amazing. Um, You'll be able to play with uh, your friends and, you know, fly around and just uh, enjoy the visuals. I mean, this game is like visually stunning i'm really curious to see how the gameplay is going to be um you know with with everybody and if it's going to actually last but we'll see it's highly anticipated and i'm hoping it's going to be good because it it looks pretty darn good so far uh they also are touting atlas from studio wildcard these are the guys that made arc survival evolved and uh this is uh, a massively multiplayer first and third person fantasy pirate adventure. They can host up to 40,000 players exploring the same globe simultaneously. So that's kind of crazy. They say uh, you can join an endless adventure of piracy and sailing, exploration and combat, role playing and progression, settlement and civilization building in one of the largest game worlds ever. So that's pretty darn interesting. Just the vast amount of people, up to 40,000 people exploring the same globe. Wow. 
that's you know we're used to up to a hundred in most games, and uh, you know this many forty thousand simultaneously. That's nuts. Well, we'll have to see how it goes. And also, uh, Devil May Cry Five from Capcom. I don't know how much we needed to say about this one. It's a very popular series. And uh, looks like this is coming out in spring of 2019. Then we've got Far Cry New Dawn from Ubisoft. If you haven't had enough of, uh, of the recent Far Cry 5, then uh, it I just shocks me how quickly they came out with this uh, New Dawn. So it's a continuation of the story, sort of, in Hope County, Montana. And uh, this is 17 years after a global nuclear catastrophe. So it's uh, some of the survivors from Hope County, and uh, they're fighting a threat known as the Highwaymen. So uh, the visuals on it look great. We'll have to see how that one works out. Then uh, Jump Force from Bandai Namco. Um. I believe this is a fighting game. Yeah, I know we talked about this one previously. So um, I don't know a whole lot about that one. I'm not totally into these types of games, but I remember seeing this. It looked sort of interesting. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, Square Enix. Uh, this one is uh, you know, fairly interesting. A lot of people really enjoy this franchise. All the Disney characters. And I thought I remember hearing that there was a leak of this game not too long ago, and uh, I guess some people got to play it already. Crazy stuff. Well, that didn't happen on console, that, so that must have been on PC. But uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out. Metro Exodus from Deep Silver. This is one that I'm really looking forward to. And, uh, you know, Metro uh, 2033. No, actually, so we had two Metro games. This is, I guess, what, technically the third one, I believe. And it looks amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited for this one. You're, there's like a whole train, nuclear winter, and I believe it's actual winter, a lot of s- snow on the ground. And uh, definitely looking forward to this one. We also have The Artful Escape of Francis Vendetti from Anna Perna Interactive. I really don't know a whole lot about this one. So uh, I haven't heard too much about this one. I don't know if you guys have. Then we have The Outer Worlds uh, Private Division. This is a a single-player first-person sci-fi RPG from Obsidian. And the Private Division. So this is uh, one that they're released an incredible looking trailer not too long ago and the premise is lost in transit while on a colonist ship bound for the furthest edge of the galaxy you awake decades later only to find yourself in the midst of a deep conspiracy threatening to destroy the oh boy halcyon halcyon colony not sure how you say that as you explore the furthest furthest reaches of space and encounter various factions all vying for power the character you decide to become will determine how this player-driven story unfolds in the corporate equation for the colony you are the unplanned variable so that game looks uh pretty interesting i'm gonna hold off on that one just see how that uh you know how that releases you know before i jump on it but it definitely looks really cool then uh, I know a lot of folks are looking forward to this. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 from Ubisoft. And uh, this game looks incredible based on some you know, the trailers that we've seen in the past. Uh, then we've also got uh, Tunic from Finji. And this is an isometric action adventure. They had a little blurb on E3 or at E3 on this thing. It looks kind of interesting. It looks like a, a different... Uh, style game, maybe almost Nintendo-ish. I don't know if that's a good way to put it. 
but Nintendo-ish or something like Monument Valley is kind of like what it reminds me of. And it looks interesting. It, I definitely gravitate towards some of these interesting looking games. Uh, then we've also got Wasteland 3 from In Exile Entertainment. Um, then another 3 game, Crackdown 3 from Microsoft Studios. A lot of folks, including Mark, of course, are looking forward to uh, this game. And hopefully the date won't push February 15th. So six weeks away and coming straight into Game Pass. And I believe it was already pre-downloadable a couple weeks ago. So uh, it's going into Game Pass globally on Xbox One and Windows 10. Also from Microsoft Studios, we have Gears 5. Actually, I guess these weren't alphabetic. Those first couple were, but not, not the rest of them. So we have Gears 5. Uh, so what they're saying about this one is you can play solo or with a friend in local split screen co-op or online co-op and experience every mode in 4K Ultra HD with HDR at 60 frames per second. So that's going to be uh, pretty cool there. The last one looked pretty darn good. I'm really curious to see how they can one-up that. And then uh, Minecraft Dungeons. It's an action-adventure game in classic dungeon crawler style. So that's going to be coming out in 2019. We just talked about it a little bit ago, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So... It's going to be interesting to see if this is going to be any harder, equal to, or easier than original Ori in terms of um, platform timing, jumping, and all that good stuff. Ori won a, tie, a ton of awards. Looks like over 50 awards and nominations. And it'll be interesting to see if the follow-up can match that or if it lost its chance with the first one and the bar has been set high that maybe they can't match it. And then lastly, they mentioned Sea of Thieves for Microsoft Studios. Now, this isn't the new release, but uh, they keep adding components to Sea of Thieves, so I guess that's how it made this list. But uh, they're going to be adding the Arena, which is an all-new competitive game mode that allows players to test their pirating skills in a fast-paced uh, match against rival crews. I wonder if that's like a battle royale. I haven't paid uh, attention to it to really know that, but uh, maybe it sounds like it might be. So, but uh, Sea of Thieves is already available in its regular format and then the stuff that was released up until now. So uh, that was their list. And then uh, I've got one more list of, uh, of titles and this one was kind of surprising, and this is the, in 2018, the most played ID at Xbox games. So, I mean, there was a fair amount of games in ID at Xbox this past year, and I didn't know that some of these were in that, but uh, we'll go through this list over here, and the winner of this meaning the most played of the id at xbox games really surprised me i never would have guessed it so there's a little teaser and uh keep you guys on the edge of your seat so uh number 10 on the list with uh and now this is not the total amount of people that played it but i believe it's how many concurrent people have played it i believe that's how they got this list. And this is the highest player counts. Yeah, that's that's all that they say. This list came from True Achievements recently. <clears throat> so number 10 on the list is Grip at 9,832 players. So this game went straight into Game Pass uh, a while back, and uh, it's a racing game arcade racer with these funky looking race cars and it's got stunt jumps, missile launchers, flipping and all sorts of stuff. So definitely not, you know, a serious game, 
but uh, it's interesting that it, it made this list at number 10 at 9,832 players. At number 9, at 11,334 players, we have Conan Exiles. So uh, this game came out uh, earlier this year, and it's the Conan franchise, I guess. And um, I don't know what much to say. It's what, like RPG-ish, sort of. But uh, yeah, almost uh, a little bit over 11,000 players. Then we have number eight, Cube 2. This game here is in, I believe it's still in, or was it for the month of December? It was Games with Gold. Let's see here. Let me look. Cube 2, December 1st through the 30th in Games with Gold. <clears throat> so you have, as of this recording over here, just a couple hours left. Uh, well, slightly over 24 hours to claim this. But Cube 2 racked in 11,551 players. This is um, kind of like a first-person puzzle platformer, kind of like Portal-ish, something like that. So um, you might want to check this out if you like Portal. Number seven, and this was one of the things that surprised me, I guess, was Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, at 14,898 players. You know, highly anticipated game. This game did great on PC for like last couple of years before it came over to Xbox and then went into Games with Gold. Or not Games with Gold, uh, Game Pass. But uh, yeah, almost 15,000 players on this one. This one ranked it at number seven. So what could be higher than this? Well, one game that can be higher than Senua's Sacrifice is No Man's Sky that ranked it ranked in at number six with 17,109 players. And, uh, you know, a title that was out on the PS4 for a long time came over to Xbox and, you know, I would have thought it would have had more players than that, but... Still, 17,000 players is uh, nothing to shake a stick at, I guess. What could beat No Man's Sky? How about Graveyard Keeper? Graveyard Keeper racked in slightly higher at 17,218 players. So that's slightly over 100 players over No Man's Sky. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, this is best way to describe this is it's sort of like Stardew Valley if you if you ever played that, uh, sort of similar just uh, not as nice I guess, but uh, yeah Graveyard Keeper and I, I could have sworn that one either was on is either in Game Pass or was Games with Gold I thought I thought we got that one. Number four on the list is Warhammer Vermintide 2 at 17,596 players. This is the third game in the 17,000s. And uh, this one didn't come out too long ago. But uh, it's another one that's in Game Pass. So if you have that, it doesn't really cost you anything to play it. Yet again in the 17,000s, at 17,956, we have Terra. I don't know too much about this one. It's an MMO. And uh, fantasy, dungeon crawling, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I want to check that one out. At least uh, almost 18,000 people did. Then we jump up to Warface at number two at 21,260 players. So uh, slightly higher over there. And uh, it's a uh, free-to-play game. I think it's got a battle royale as well. But uh, it's evidently very popular at number two in the indie store. And number one, this one really shocked me and made me kind of question this list. <laughs> but number one is Super Mega Baseball at 26,975 players. It was a Games with Gold title years ago, and apparently it's, uh, it's ranked up there. So it's the number one ID at Xbox game for 2018. Very, very surprising. I just don't understand how Super Mega Baseball could beat out something like Hellblade 
or No Man's Sky. I, I, I would have assumed for sure that those games would have been higher than Super Mega Baseball, but numbers are numbers, and the stats don't lie, I guess. So anyway, so that was the list, and uh, just a couple quick things to rattle off here before we close out the show. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail by going to this xboxlife.com. Click on the voicemail widget on the right hand side of the screen. You can leave up to 90 second voicemail on the site over there. If you need to speak longer, just break it up into multiple parts or record yourself on your phone, computer, whatever. Send us an MP3 to contact at this xboxlife.com. You can also send emails, questions, and all that stuff to contact as well. Also, we're on Twitter at you can get to that by going to this xboxlife.com forward slash Twitter. And there's a Facebook group, this xboxlife.com forward slash Facebook is your quick way to find that. It's a closed group. So if you're not a member already, you have to ask for membership to the group. Uh, answer uh, two easy questions. Very simple. Even a caveman could do it, I guess. <laughs> but uh, answer two quick questions. You'll get accepted into the group. And a closed group basically means that you have to ask to be a member of the group, which is not a big deal, but also that any messages within the group stay within the group. And uh, we do that just for spam purposes because we got spammed like crazy when we first started the group. Okay, this week's uh, retail releases. Let me play the jingle. So retail releases for this week, really don't have anything, not a whole lot going on until January. So uh, nothing to say there. Games with gold are making the old switcheroo here in a, in a couple days here, about a day. We have uh, Cube 2 exiting uh, games with gold for Xbox One on the 31st. And new to the scene is Celeste on January 1st. Then uh, continuing from mid-December through mid-January, we have Never Alone on Xbox 360 and Xbox One back combat. We have, just for a couple more hours over here, we have Mercenaries Playground of Destruction. Uh, that's going to be exiting on the 31st. And the new game is Laura Croft and the Guardian of Light. Yet again. So uh, lastly, real quick here, if you make any purchases on Amazon, make sure to use our affiliate link. You can find that on the webpage or at the top of the Facebook group. Uh, just click on the link for your uh, particular store, US or UK. Do that each and every time that you uh, make your purchase on Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but we get a little finder's fee for sending you their way. And uh, once you click that, it only lasts for 24 hours, a little cookie or whatever that they use. So uh, make sure to use that each and every link. If you can bookmark it, that would actually be fantastic. It'd be a super easy way to do it. If you're an iTunes user, find the show on the iTunes store, give us a five-star ranking rating on there. And that improves our ranking. Uh, more folks or the uh, higher our ranking, the more folks can find out about the show and uh, grow the community. Also follow us on Mixer, Twitch, and YouTube. And thanks to learn your lesson for the music. So thanks uh, once again for uh, joining me here today and uh, we'll catch you all next week and uh, look for some, uh, let's see, next week probably we're going to be moving the show up a little bit and then uh, over the next couple of weeks a bunch of changes are coming to the show. Nothing huge, just, uh, just to make it easier to produce and uh, easier to record and all that other good stuff. So this has been episode 510. Thanks for listening, everybody. Good night.